At the end of time, towards that era, the Prophet ﷺ tells us about a very strange man who will rule the earth. And guess where he will be from? He will be from Abyssinia, Ethiopia. An Abyssinian king will rule the earth. His name, as the Prophet ﷺ describes him, is Thus Suwaiqatayn. It's a name and a description. Thus Suwaiqatayn means the man of the peculiar looking shins. They're thin and they're short. Thus Suwaiqatayn. He will come from Abyssinia, Al Habasha, Ethiopia. And he will destroy the Kaaba, not the Medina, the Kaaba itself, the holiest symbol of the Muslims today. He will destroy the Kaaba in order to steal its treasure and clothe covering. What is the cloth covering? Kiswa? What I understand from that is the covering they have on it today. Or the cloth covering. Al Kiswa. The Kaaba is the ancient building which was built by Ibrahim alayhi salam and whose foundations were laid by Adam. This is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Hatta idha futihat ya'juju wa ma'juj Until the day that Gog and Magog people are let through their barrier. The tafsir is that it is reported from Ka'b al-Ahbar that the suwaiqatayn will first emerge at the end of Isa alayhi salam's time. Allah will send Isa alayhi salam at the head of a vanguard of between seven and eight hundred. While they are marching towards the Suwaiqatayn, it is a special army of about 500, 800 special, which Isa alayhi salam will take with him to fight the Suwaiqatayn, Allah will send a breeze from the direction of Yemen, which will take the soul of every believer. Only the worst of people will be left and they will begin to live like animals or copulate like animals. Ka'bah the Lan who said, at that time the hour will be close at hand. In other hadiths it tells us that the Suwaiqatayn will appear before this knowledge completely goes and he will live to that time. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam say, the Suwaiqatayn from Abyssinia will destroy the Kaaba and steal its treasures and Kiswa, the cloth covering. It is as if I could see him now. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam saying, it is as if I could see him now. And then he describes him. He says, he is bold headed and has a distortion in his wrists. They are a little bit deformed. He will strike the Kaaba with his spade and pickaxe. This is narrated by Sunan Ahmad as well. It was reported from Abdullah ibn Umar, the Allah Anima, the Prophet also said, Leave the Abyssinians alone so long as they do not disturb you, for no one will recover the treasure of the Kaaba except this Suwaiqatayn from Abyssinia. Abyssinia, the Ethiopians, are our brothers if they are Muslims, and if they are not, leave them alone, there's nothing wrong. When Prophet spoke about this Suwaiqatayn, it's as if the companions got angry. And he said to them, leave the Abyssinians alone. The man's name is the Suwaiqata and he happens to be coincidentally from Abyssinia. It doesn't mean you fight the people of this man who existed before him or even in his time. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is as if I can see him now. He is black and his legs are widely spaced. He will destroy the Kaaba stone by stone. I just want to make a little comment here. In some countries, when you say the word black about Africans or Ethiopians, uh, it's an insult. We don't worry about these terminologies that people are using and the stereotypical uh, theories and ideas which they've made up. The word black has always been since the creation of Adam salam. When we say that, we mean it in a respectful way that this is the color that people are used to saying, white and black and yellow. So there is no... Bilal radiallahu anhu was a great leader. Abu Huray radiallahu anhu narrates many hadiths and they were all uh, African. The Prophet sallallahu said, The hour will not come until a man from Qahtan. Qahtan is the Suwaiqatan. His tribe is called Qahtan or his family lineage. Appears and rules the people. 
This is in Muslim and similar hadith in Bukhari. This man could be the Suwaiqatayn, someone else, Allahu Alam. But he comes from Qahtan. And some others say the Suwaiqatayn comes from Abyssinia. Allahu Alam about this. And another hadith, Rasulullah said, Day and night will not come to an end until a man called Jah Jah or Jah Jah holds sway. He will come and he will rule and he will destroy. And Allahu Alam, this could also be the name of the Suway Qatayn. Umar radiallahu anhu reported that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam say, The people of Mecca will leave. The people of Mecca will leave and only a few people will pass through it. Then it will be resettled and rebuilt. Then the people will leave it again and no one will ever return. These are also signs that pious people, religious people, as though that he is telling us they will no longer be on earth in that time. How? How can religious people be on earth and not be in Mecca? Since the day the Prophet ﷺ conquered Mecca, Muslims have never, ever left the Kaaba. There's always been someone in there, night and day, from that day. Not a single day, except probably in a flood, a terrible flood or something. <coughs> There's always been people in the Haram. Now that we know this, the Suwaiqatayn will come and grab the Kaaba, break it brick by brick, and no one will be able to stop him. Well, not that no one will be able, you think. No one will stop him because there will be no one to stop him. Either he'll be so powerful, but Allahu A'lam about that, but what the hadiths indicate is that there will be no believers on that time. When that happens, my dear brothers and sisters, and the Kaaba it is destroyed, therefore, no believers, muwahid. You heard the hadith earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a breeze before the Muslims reach the Suwaiqatayn and every believer. In another hadith, Prophet said, every believer, muwahid, who is a monotheist, believes in only one God and doesn't make any shirk, will die. Will die peacefully from this breeze. And only the disbelievers and the tyrants and the criminals will stay on earth. The Kaaba is destroyed. The symbols of Islam are destroyed. The Quran has been lifted. There is no more Islamic knowledge. What's left? A dunya. Dunya. The world. The word dunya in Arabic comes from dana'a or daniya or dunuwa, which means something which is low. Metaphorically speaking, low, as in its value is low. Daniya. Don't go after this dunya, it's daniya, it's low. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ad-dunya mal'una. The dunya is cursed. Mal'unun ma fiha. Everything in it is cursed. Illa dhikrullahi wa ma wala. Except for the remembrance of Allah and whoever are the allies of the remembrance of Allah. So the beasts and creatures are allies of the remembrance of Allah. Because Allah says in the Quran, wa min shay'in illa yusabbihu bihamdihi wa lakin la tafqahuna tasbihahum. There isn't anything on earth other than the humans and jinns except that it glorifies in the name of Allah but you cannot understand their praise. And other verses in the Quran, Allah talks about mountains and trees and all that that glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point is, Allahu A'lam, what will happen to the animals? Will they die before the end of time? Allah knows best. But the point is, everything on earth is cursed that does not follow the allegiance of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what happens to this mal'una? It gets destroyed. And everything that's mal'un on it will also get destroyed. Now it's ready. No more repentance, everything's destroyed, symbols of Islam. Finally, the last piece of sign will happen. 